Hey everyone, Lewis here one more time, bringing upfront creative content for CG artists <clears throat> every once in a while. And today uh, I'll be talking about non-high-poly workflows between Blender and Substance Painter. So what I mean by that is I have this mesh here that if I turn the wireframe on, you can see it's not a high poly, it's totally low poly for game standards. It means below 10, 10 uh, K polys. So it's actually a really simple kit bash of different low poly parts I had to create this uh, mechanical look here. On the previous episode, on my channel here, you can find me one hour uh, UV unwrapping all these pieces together. So today, after finishing that, I took more two hours of refining the UVs, packing things until I was satisfied with the result. But we'll be talking a lot about normal maps today and the differences between tangent space normal maps and object space normal maps. So, um, the main idea behind this workflow is that you, you don't need to create a high poly at all. You can convince detail to your artistic style uh, only by making uh, a bevel node in your cycles engine. So here I have this model. I UV Rapid. Uh, he has some mirror modifier applied. Let me turn off the wireframe here. You can see I have a mirror modifier applied, some of the pieces separated together, and I have UV mapped that with uh, overlapping islands because I wanted to um, have optimized UV space. Here you can find the normal tangent normal space I baked, and it's a pain in the ass to bake this. What I do is simple. I leave it everything as it is, lay out my UVs. Okay, now in Blender 2.8, you can select everything and click tab to add it then at the same time. So here I have all the UVs I packed. Uh, the problem with the uh, baking here is that if you bake right now with separate parts, it will bake individually and the chances of give, getting an error is drastically higher than if you simply, let's say, click Shift D to duplicate all your mesh. Then you click Alt C to apply all your modifiers at once and then Control J to merge them in a single piece. Now I have, let's say, the lag here. Uh, let's go to island select. You can see I have double islands uh, sharing the same UV space. Um, that's that's a really good technique as well. Here, the, the thing is that before you applying everything and selecting, uh, the main difference between baking a tangent space and a object space normal map is that um, with the tangent space, you need, and listen to this, you need to have a edge split modifier in all your meshes, okay? It will not bake properly your tangent space normal map if you don't have edge split modifier at all, okay? And the second thing is that Substance Painter, as of 2019, doesn't overwrite your normal map if it's object space. It only overwrites tangent space normal map, okay? But Lewis, what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is that, let me change this to the shader editor to showcase. Here I have the bevel node I used previously to bake, okay? So I leave this plugged on, then I select this, and then I bake to this file, uh, to this image, blank image file I have here. And after that, I unplug the bevel node. It's not necessarily for me anymore. And then I plug 
uh, that map with no color data applied with a normal map back to the uh, principal shader. And the, the difference really subtle, but if you come right here, you see we have this kind of weld uh, merged uh, together plastic effect that the Bevel shader gives you. So if I turn this value to zero or simply unplug the normal, you can see we give, we have low poly, high edges again. So this is the advantage of this workflow. You know, it's you really quickly have the bevels in your normal uh, bit without a high poly or even cages applied, okay? And with this normal map, then you can export this mesh to Substance Painter, have fun there, and then uh, when you come back to Substance Painter here, uh, you open your original map that you exported from Substance Painter that overwrites the same bevels you have on the, your original normal map. And now you have all your secondary details that you did in Substance Painter on the same normal map that you exported from, from Blender. So this is the main difference and it's a really good workflow. And it's good to mention that object spaces normal maps are really good to use and they are usually faster uh, to bake this type of uh, bevel node details here. Therefore, um, the problem with that is, is in Substance Painter, you can really override that map. So you can have secondary details if you're using. So the way to go, if you want to adopt the object space workflow is only by having cages and having a high poly inside Blender. As of today, uh, if you're going to export your model directly from Blender to Unity or Unreal, and you have the high poly and the low poly and a cache to bake it right here, then way to go. You can simply use the object space one. Uh, it's going to be gorgeous. But I personally prefer tangent space because it's even easier for you to paint. You can use Quicksil or other normal map suits inside Photoshop, even if you want to make uh, different uh, adjustments to it later. If your baking process uh, abruptly stopped and you want to restart again, you can even merge different parts of your tangent space or uh, normal map after. So I, I'm a big fan of the tangent space workflow. So here in some sense is the same thing. You can go nuts, right? <clears throat> uh, here, you you when you first start up Substance, you, you only will have one texture set. I mean, for this workflow, I decided that I want to have this, the, the, the entire character in a single texture set, which is it's equivalent of the material inside uh, Blender. So here is the material name I had uh, in Blender. It converted to a texture set for everything. And here I didn't have anything of these materials. I have just the normal. So I imported the normal from Blender to here to have the little highlights I wanted on the mesh. And then from here, I just like went crazy, you know. I usually create a blank uh, base layer and in this base layer I turn off all the things I'll hide normal leave only metal and rough then I select uh, the uh, overall roughness of the entire material only on the base layer and I leave it there all the subsequent layers So many noise today. Well, anyway, so here I created basically a few folders to separate parts of the mesh 
based on what I wanted. So I separated after that the different armors. So here we have it. I give it a more color separation. I think I will probably delete that layer after. It's kind of too, too shiny. And after that, I started adding these secondary details. So here you can see every all the hide information, everything is on this layer here. Then a ambient occlusion map, I applied it as a multiply. The overlay I applied as a uh, overlay of, of course. And I also have another map here, which is just a base light. And that's uh, what they like calling the blizzard type of uh, baking. I think it's, this is the AO and this is the, yeah, this is the environment. So I just baked a gradient from top to bottom from emit emissive light uh, to give this more volume type of uh, effect to the character. And I like saying that if you have a base texture that works, all your other textures will work as well. So if you have a base texture that is attractive, that is convincing, uh, your material view will also be convincing, you know? But yeah, guys, this is the... That's it for this episode. See ya, till next time. Mm -hmm.